Hello YouTube. How you doing? I'm going to go over my uh, Prius home generator which is hooked up into my manual transfer switch in my house and give you a little demo of uh, demonstrating how the Prius itself can power all the essentials in my house without needing one of those uh, 7000 watt generators. So let's look at the components of the system. Uh, the first thing I have here is a PowerBright pure sine wave 1000 watt inverter. Um, it's 1000 watts and it will peak to 2000 watts. For my particular scenario, I don't need more than 1000 watts and most of the time I'll only be running around 500 watts of power. It's pure sine wave because that's what's needed to run electronics and you might have some problems if you wanted to uh, run your laptop or some TVs, cable box, etc. with your uh, inverter. Then the next component of the system is the cord and this is a cord that I fabricated myself. This will be in the notes but basically what you see here is that you have your typical uh, 12 gauge extension cord with your 120 volt 15 amp um, male end going to a 240 volt 30 amp end and this is the part that I fabricated myself. This then connects into my manual transfer switch which is in the house. There's a plug in the outside where the 30 amp connection goes into and then inside the house I had my electrician wire up 10 circuits uh, to power my house. Now you'll see that typically what you need to do is plug in a 220 volt or 30 amp to 30 amp but since we're running from the Prius which only produces 15 amps we had to make a special cable to do that. So let's get into it. First thing we have here is the inverter which is hooked up to the positive negative leads here is an 80 amp fuse. I found the instructions on setting this up. I copied from another guy online and just mimicked his instructions itself. reason why there's an 80 amp fuse here is because from what I read the car has a 100 amp fuse so you want this fuse to blow first before you do something with your car. As you can see here all the connections I made myself they have the shrink wrap on them and the connections have been manic mechanically uh, fused together. You may think that you can get out your normal uh, stereo speaker stripper cables and electrical tape but as you can see these cables are quite big um, so you need some special tools that I'll note within the notes on how to put this together. It wasn't hard uh, but it wasn't exactly easy either. At the end here you can see an Anderson connector which is pretty awesome because it allows me to simply plug in the inverter into the car without messing around with bolts on the battery. So let's see where the battery is. It's basically here in the corner. I think all the Priuses have this. This happens to be a plug-in Prius. Um, so it has a plug on the side of the car over here, which you probably have seen before, where I can plug it in. But anyway, all you do is lift this up. You take out this little tray here. Excuse the camera for a second. And now you can see the battery. Um, basically, you can see my red lead coming off of here and my negative lead coming off the battery. Basically, I hooked, I hooked that into there, wired it in, and now we have the other end of the Anderson connector. So all I have to do is plug those two together and it will fire up the inverter. Uh, one small trick I learned just make sure your inverter is off before you try to plug in it because you could get a little spark. So what I'll do here is I'll simply connect the two together. I'm going to put down the camera for one second. Hopefully you heard that click. And now they're connected. If I go over here, hit on, you can see the inverter is on. Everything's wired up. When I'm done with it, I simply can turn off the inverter and disconnect the cables, which I can do with one hand. So once again, hold on one second, click it, and basically I can tuck this back underneath into where the battery is, and 
put it out of the way until I need the Prius as an inverter. So just some help on creating the connectors that go from the inverter into the Anderson connector into the Prius. As I said before, if you're going to try to strip these using your typical wire strippers, it's not going to work. These are two gauge wire and as you can see, about the size of my pinky. The rubber around it is about a quarter of an inch thick, so you're not going to be able to strip them very easily and you might start fraying the cable. What I did, well the best case scenario is that you have some tools you can borrow from a friend so you don't have to buy anything. But what I did is I actually used my uh, copper pipe cutter. And if you've probably seen these before, you put the copper pipe on it, you tie it down and you spin it around the pipe and you keep tying and spinning to cut it. I found this works perfectly for these cables and I was able to cut the plastic off the cables without any fraying of the wire. So it worked for me. Um, your mileage might be vary and it might um, be a little harder for you. You might want to invest in some kind of wire stripper tool. The other part which is hard to do is actually doing the mechanical seal. So you could solder these cables but I decided to mechanically fuse them and as you can see here, here's a uh, spare Anderson connector. I actually screwed up one of them and I uh, hammered it wrong. But basically what you'll do is you'll strip the wire, follow the instructions, it tells you exactly how long the strip should be. I think for my, it was uh, an inch and an eighth. And then what you'll do is you put the wire into the end of the connector and then use this tool. And I bought this on Amazon. It's basically a little uh, crimper tool. It's pretty heavy, probably weighs about a pound or so, but it only costs 15 bucks. So it's a lot less expensive than one of those hydraulic uh, crimping tools, which can start at 50 and go all the way up to $300. Basically what you'll do is imagine if there was a wire in here, you put this into the tool, you'll hit the thing in the back, you'll set it, and then what you'll do is you put this on the ground. Don't put this on your workbench, put this on some solid concrete. Get your sledgehammer and you'll just whack that down. Probably takes about three to four good whacks before it's fused correctly. The only thing to know is that as you're hammering it, make sure your wire isn't sneaking back out. So what actually I did is put a little piece of um, electrical tape around it to prevent it because I did ruin one of the connectors by doing that, which is a pain in the neck because these connectors are about $6 a piece. The other thing to note is that you'll probably want to put some of this uh, heat shrink uh, rubber around it. And basically all you do is you seal your connections up, you get your blowtorch out. Um, might work with a blow dryer, but I have a blowtorch and I use that. And then you'll see it makes a nice looking professional job. Um, so nothing is hack here. Don't want to mess with the $30,000, $40,000 Prius and risk uh, any electrical sparks. So let's talk about this cable for a second. Okay, Pretzel? Pretzel's helping me with this video. My original setup, I went out to Costco and I purchased a 7,000 watt inverter and had my electrician install a 10 circuit switch. That worked out great, but what I noticed right away after it was set up that I only use about 500 watts of the 7,000 watt generator. I'm not hooking up the home AC unit or having the whole house powered. I just wanted the essentials to work such as the refrigerator, hot water, and then some of the convenience items like having the internet, power outlets to charge the phones, lights in the kitchen, etc. Um, after I ran everything through the built-in meters, I realized that I hardly even peaked up to 800 watts, so I started rethinking what I had. Now, I didn't want to take out my transfer switch because I just spent about $1,000 to install it uh, professionally. So I was trying to figure out a way of how do you convert a typical 120 volt 15 amp power connector like you would use you know to power about anything in your house to the manual tra transfer switch inlet that's outside the house what I read is that basically the difference between 120 volts and 220 and 240 volts is there's two phases of power so if we think about this connector right here, what you have is a positive, a negative, and a ground. What you have in this connector is that you actually have two positives, 120 positive, another 120 positive, or two phases. Then you have your typical neutral and ground. 
So what I found online is that if you jump the cable, because this would only have 120 volts obviously, because that's what this side of the cable has, you can fuse together a little piece of wire jumping 120 volts to the 120 volts. So at the end of the day, you're still only providing at most 15 amps to this wire, but it doesn't screw up the circuit switch because it thinks that there's 240 volts coming in. Now, the only things to uh, be careful about is if you have any multi-branch wired circuits in your house. What I read online, and I'll post links to my discussion I had with several um, really techie people in the electric business, is that if you have those type of circuits in your house, you could risk overloading one of your circuits. In this particular scenario, since we're only feeding in 1,000 watts, it's virtually impossible to overload uh, the box because it's such a low amperage and uh, wattage that's coming into the system. One other thing I wanted to note is that this is not a suicide cable. A suicide cable, which is something you should never do, and you've probably seen some YouTube videos on it, those guys are just asking for trouble. A suicide cable is when you take two mail, you make your own cable and you put two mail ins. And the reason that's so dangerous is that when you plug this in and it's live, really nothing can happen to me here. This is all a female end, right? It's male to female. If you were to make one of those dryer outlet outlets, then you would have a live side. So technically this side's plugged in, fed live. Now you can be careful with the wire, but who knows what might happen. You may just brush your hand against it and electrocute yourself. So you never want to do anything that involves um, that has two male ends, otherwise known as a suicide wire. Okay, let's see how it works. As you can see here, I already have the inverter connected to the car. Everything's off. So what I would do is I go in the car. I'm just going to leave my keys here. Uh, normally they're in your pocket, obviously. I'm just going to start the car and keep it on. Okay. Obviously it's a Prius, there's no engine to start, but now the car's on. Key's in the car, so it doesn't complain. It's going to roll the window down. Uh, that's it. Now the car's on, powered up. Next thing I'll do is I'll turn the inverter on. Good, we got power. I also have here a kilowatt set up, and you can see that I'm generating 115 volts of power. I think I can switch it to the wattages. We'll keep it at that. That'll tell me how much power I'm utilizing. I'll plug in the male side of my cable. Excuse me for the camera work. And then what I'll do is I'll take my cable. This is, uh, I think I got a 25 foot cable here. And according to the cable specification, um, if it's 25 feet or less, you can run 20 amps through, and since I'm only generating less than 15, no worries about that. Okay, so back to the car. I got the power cable coming from the car. Snicked around my hostas over to the inlet that the electrician installed for me. As you can see here, it's waterproof, etc. So basically all I do is lift the cover and plug in the adapter and give it a little twist and that should be connected now now what we'll do is walk in the house and simulate a power outage let's just check to see yep zero watts nothing being generated